Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to just briefly talk about the new 3D tracker in Flame. I'm not going to go through every step of uh, start to finish of how you would do a track. We'll get into that a little bit later. This is more just pointing out a few things that I think might get missed by new users and or if you haven't used the tracker much, uh, might just not know that they exist. So I'm here to just point out a few things that I've stumbled into along the way that might make your experience a little bit easier. So uh, I will walk through the steps, but I'm not going to linger on any of them as we do this. Uh, to start the new camera track in Flame, uh, it's by using this camera analysis tool. Uh, the first thing I do want to point out though is if you drag out a camera analysis tool, uh, you'll notice that it's not connected to a camera and that uh, eventually will need to be parented to a, a camera that because all the data from here will feed to a camera node. Uh, in this particular case what you can do is hit W or choose mimic link and go ahead and create this connection uh, so that when we analyze it feeds the data to our default camera. Um, a safer a uh, quicker way is just to make sure your camera node is already selected when you drag out your camera analysis and then this connection is made for you automatically, which is nice. So to get started, it's really easy. I'm just going to double click the camera analysis. Uh, I get some controls. I'm not going to get into any of the specific settings right now. I'm just going to set this up for what I would do just to get this track going so I can show what I want to. Um, F8 is our uh, keyboard shortcut to get to kind of the camera uh, window and all the views we have through it. If I cycle through three times, I get three different views. So we get to the scene, the media, and the camera. Uh, this will start uh, populating once we've done our analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and set a frame. Uh, as you can see, it is now set the reference. If I hit F8 now, we get a few more um, you know, uh, cues that we've kind of started the process, but uh, nothing has been tracked yet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit analyze. Uh, it does take a little bit uh, as it calculates. I will fast forward this and come back once it's done. Okay, we're back. Analysis is done. Uh, one thing to point out, uh, you saw me increase this max trackers to 7,000. Uh, the default is 3,500. Unlike other trackers or even the flame mono analyzer, this is uh, not something where we tend to stay in the hundreds, but rather uh, promote it into the thousands. Uh, it's kind of the more the merrier in this type of technology, unlike uh, other trackers where you and then try to uh, be very mindful of the count. Um, <clears throat> now th that track is done, when I cycle through F8, you're now going to see some different things. And uh, these are all of our trackers. Uh, I can move through the scene. First thing I will do is look for any that are just not working for me uh, in this particular case. Uh, everything at first glance looks okay, but let's say, let's say some of these just aren't working for me. The quickest thing that you'll want to do is start to select them. Uh, that's just control and drag. Um, and then when I hit refine, oops, I can disable these trackers and I can disable these and just kind of go through and disable the ones that just don't work for me. And then when I'm ready to kind of resolve, uh, I'll just hit refine. It'll quickly calculate those and take them out of the equation and present me with kind of an updated camera track. That's the usual kind of quickest workflow. But what I really wanted to point out is what 
what we want to do with this track and how we can use it in action to our benefit um, outside of just setting up uh, some some nulls. So let's take a quick look now. So, so the first thing you see is when I go into the scene view and when, by tapping F8, which is kind of our perspective view, uh, you saw that big blue square, that's the camera. And you can see the scene scale seems pretty crazy big, uh, almost unmanageable. So the first tip for today is really just, what do, how can we manage that? Well, we do have the ability to scale our scene. Uh, I can do it gesturally or just punch something in. So now if I go to 0.5, now it seems like a much more manageable kind of um, point cloud uh, for me to work with and uh, at no real cost to the scene itself. Uh, I would like to set the ground plane. So we're gonna go ahead and choose some points that we think are on the ground. Uh, I can hit F8 again to kind of uh, check to see to make sure I'm grabbing the right points. Uh, when I hold the Alt key and and rotate, then I'm kind of in this perspective view. Uh, these all look good to me, like they're on the ground. So I'm gonna hit, go ahead and hit set ground. And now we have oriented the scene. Uh, we will actually also pick an origin point. And now we kind of have the foundation for the scene. So usually what would happen, you know, let's say I'm going to end up retouching this area over here. Uh, I need to get some locators. So we will go in and set some scene trackers. So what's happening is, you know, when we go to our result view uh, and leave the camera analysis by hitting F4, I now see that I have uh, an axis, uh, you know, we can start to do whatever we need to do, eventually clean that up, but for just the purpose of this test, I can see that it will track with um, the camera parented under the axis, uh, and that's great. That's exactly what we were looking for. However, what I think is missing in this view is I can't see anything else. So if I go to all my different views, uh, shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, etc. I can see the grid and the locator and I could set a bunch of locators. There's no question if I go back to F8 into the camera analysis, um, we can start to, you know, I can put a locator for anywhere in the scene. That's not so much an issue. Uh, and then I start to just get a bunch of these axes and nulls and just in case you ever want to turn off that grid, um, you're able to turn off the plane. So you could just be left with just the, the XYZ representation of the locator. You don't need to have the grid on if you don't want it. However, what I really wanted to showcase here was the fact that like, I want to see this point cloud in our working view so that I can kind of keep changing the scene and know where I'm at without having to keep referencing this uh, camera analysis kind of uh, uh, view. So what we can do is uh, go to a display under the camera analysis and in this uh, result view, there is a checkbox for show trackers. And what's really helpful about this now is now I'm in my F4 view and if I go to shift one, uh, oops, shift two, shift three, shift four, etc., I now see my point cloud. And why is this helpful? Well, now I can place things in the scene uh, with a lot more accuracy for what I might be trying to do. So if I'm just going to get, say, a model, Uh, we'll just scale that down a little bit. And now I have a pretty good idea of where 
it is in the scene just by using this point cloud. So I know that if I want to move it over there and then uh, space F4 to get into kind of my perspective view, I can still now interactively see it with the point cloud in place. Um, and I think it's just going to really help me line it up. And of course, if you don't want these scene trackers on anymore, I can hit the I key just to turn the icons off and on. So it doesn't have to be there if you don't want it to be, but it's certainly nice to have it in the viewport when you need it. So you can really set your scene and build your scene without continuously going back to the camera analysis and like selecting more points, finding more axes. I mean, that's incredibly helpful. And especially when we need to target something and do our projections and whatnot, uh, you absolutely want that. But I think most people are gonna overlook the fact that there is a show trackers button in the result view uh, that is um, there for you to use as you need to. So you can really set your scene and uh, see each view as, as if you were in a 3D program. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, there are a lot more things you can do with the camera analysis tool uh, that will help you uh, kind of manage your workflow while you're inside action trying to kind of do your layering and, and set up your, your kind of Z space. Uh, but it's a it's a process so uh please reach out if you have any questions hope this helps and i will talk to you guys soon thanks bye